Well, I didn't see any need to look at any more. I looked at a lot of them on the internet. Um, the reason being, I know the areas here very well. I know what apartments are like. Uh, I've seen many before. And this one in particular is located precisely in one of the places I want it to be located. Price is great, place is nice, it has everything I want. So why keep looking? Uh, so I made a deal and I'll go into detail on how to get an apartment, how to rent it, how to get past uh, a lot of the requirements. <laughs> Welcome to my first official vlog in my new apartment in Armenia, Colombia. Today I'm going to talk about finding the right place. And I think this is, if you're going to come and live here, this is probably the most important vlog that I could make. Now, I will be referring to Armenia, Colombia. While it will be similar in other places, there will be differences. So you can watch it take it to heart and apply a lot of it, but not to in its entirety. But if you're in the Armenia area, um, this will be very helpful to you. First of all, most important thing, location, location, location. It's no different here. And in the cities in Colombia, location is measured by stratus. Stratus being the lowest rung of the ladder of one, two, three, four, five, and six. Six is the upper crust, the special zone, the more expensive area. Now it's interesting because the lower you go, the lower the cost of your utilities will be. The higher you go, the more you're going to pay. You're going to pay more for your lights, you're going to pay more for your water. You have to pay a price for being in that location. Another interesting thing about location is, for example, I wanted needed fiber optic because of the upload speed. Where DSL is okay for download, it's horrendous for upload. And if I'm uploading videos, that's, that's always a problem for me. So um, I needed fiber optic. Well, in Armenia, you can only get fiber optic if you live in Stratus 5 or 6. If you live in 4, you're not eligible. You can't get it. It's kind of interesting. Well, I would always live in probably Stratus 5 um, based on what I know and possibly 4, but because of the internet situation, it would be 5 anyway. Okay, another thing that's very important, and you will probably need to go back and visit your prospective apartment a couple times at different times of the day. Noise. How close are you to schools? Now, in Manizales, in the place that was a temporary location, it was right next door to a Catholic school. And there was singing and dancing and clapping and screaming all day long. They play football out in the field throughout the day. I'm, don't you go to classes? <laughs> but it was really noisy. And a couple times a day when all the parents would come with their cars, it would be jammed up and it was really noisy. I actually couldn't do videos at the apartment in the day except on weekends and even then sometimes no because the noise was so bad it was very difficult to eliminate it. I managed to get a couple in but um, there was a, a real deterrent. Well that noise can really get on your nerves after a while. So you want to pay attention to that. Are you in a construction zone? Now what I mean by that is are you near a building that for the next year or two they're going to be working on it? That could be a problem. So you want to take these things into account. Another thing about noise is, is the apartment that you're going to choose facing a busy road. 
Now, if it's on the back side of that, chances are it's going to be okay. But if I'm on the front side of that, the noise is going to translate through the through the windows, and that could get you know that could get kind of uh, annoying at times too. Now I understand that sometimes that sort of noise just becomes background to you, but there is something about it where it is rather difficult to really ever truly relax when you always have that going on in the background. So, well, with some it won't matter. It's a consideration, and for me it's an important consideration. Another thing that I will mention is construction in Colombia has this, this weird thing, this quirk, and it won't be in every case, but it's really common, is your bathrooms don't really have those uh, fan air vents that go up to the, to the top. What you have is just a vent in the wall, a grate, just a vent, and so the steam just goes out. Now, where does that vent go to? Does it go out in the hallway? Does that mean every time you're in the bathroom making inappropriate noises, people walking down the hall are going to hear you? You may laugh, and I know some of you chuckled, but that's actually the case with some of these places and where they're located. Is that vent going to be pointing out to some place where it's noisy all the time? Where it may not translate through the wall, but it's going to come through that vent. So when I chose this apartment, I have vents, but the vent to the one bathroom goes out behind the elevator shaft, and the other one goes to a place where really no one ever goes. So, you know, but it was something I paid attention to. And I didn't realize this as many times as I've been here. I've never realized it until I had that temporary rental while I was looking for my actual place. That had one of those vents, and there's noise coming through there all the time. Uh, particularly at night when you'd have people, you know, partying just for the sake. There's people in Colombia party hard, and they know how to party, but that can bring, you know, music and dancing and noise at times when maybe you're just not in the mood for that. Okay, number three on my list is transportation. Because owning your own car or motorcycle is so easy and so inexpensive even if you think you're not going to, particularly like me, you come from Ecuador, it's like, it's, it's almost like it's out of reach, it's such a hassle, you don't want to deal with it. So you come here and you're looking at buses and taxis, and that's fine, and you have that here. But there's a good chance that after you're here for a while, you will realize that if you want to have a car, it's really not very hard, and it's not very expensive. So, make sure that whatever you get has some kind of parking available for you. You would think that that would be a no-brainer, but it's not necessarily. And even if you don't want it now, six months from now, you might decide you want to do that. And if you decide that you don't want to use that until a later date, there's very often people that will rent it from you and pay you for that space. And of course, the obvious thing about transportation is you want to make sure that you're on a bus line or the taxis are relatively available. While walking three or four blocks to a place where taxis ex exist, you know, may not seem like that big a deal, but there are times when you just don't have time to do that. Or maybe you're in a torrential downpour and it's just, you, you just don't want to go walk the rest of the day in wet shoes or, you never know. So you want to have a location where it's convenient. Now if you're picking Stratus 5 and 6, it's kind of an automatic, unless you're in the outskirts or like the suburb area. But usually good transportation will follow. But put it on your list and make sure what's available. Ask. Walk it to see how difficult it is. Now they do have an app for city taxi, but I've noticed here in Armenia it's not like other larger cities in, in Colombia. Uh, like Easy Taxi is in, in uh, Ecuador, or Azu Taxi, which was the best one in Cuenca. But they have something called City Taxi. But it's not always functioning the way you'd want it to function. I don't, I don't know yet the rhyme or reason to it. Sometimes you can go to City Taxi and just call up your taxi. Other times, you have to give a two-hour notice. 
Well, that's really not practical most of the time. So you want to be where it's close for taxis. For me, the, they drive by the front door of this building. So it's, it's not a problem. But you want to look for that sort of thing. I mean, what if you don't feel good? What if you're sick, but you have to go somewhere? Maybe you're going to go to the doctor. You don't really want to be, you know, forced to hike block after block after block if it's raining or, or whatever. So even if you're going to go out and walk, which I highly recommend it in a city like this, you want to have it convenient for those times when it's important to have it up until you get your own car. Shopping. For similar reasons to the above, it's nice, it's convenient to be near some basic things. I'm one block from a supermarket. I'm four blocks from the newest mall in Armenia. I'm about five or six blocks from another mall. Um, now, I'm in a residential area, but these things are all just right at, right at hand. There's a supermarket about five blocks, four, maybe four blocks from here, that has imports, like you can go and buy cheddar cheese, for example. Um, there's imported food there, so it's very close, it's very convenient. Now, I wouldn't build my life around getting cheddar cheese, that's just an example. But it, in your life, you may think that you have nothing to do, but generally when you come to a place like this, it's so easy to meet people. They drag you into their circle. And next thing you know, you find your life is busy. You've got things to do. It's, you're not just sitting around. And so spending half a day just to accomplish a task becomes more of a pain than some leisurely thing you're doing because you don't have anything better to do. I always make my life busy. And, and so whether it was in Cuenca and it owned, whether it's here in Manizales, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, I always have things to do. There's always things going on. And I highly recommend that. But it does kind of put your back up against the wall sometimes where you really need some conveniences for the basic things in your life. And I'll add this as a sub line of uh, shopping. You want to make sure that your banks are close by and uh, paying your utilities and all of the basic things like that. I'm one block from the, the biggest movie star location which handles the internet, your cell phone. I'm two blocks from the ATM that gives me the best exchange rate for no fees. I'm two blocks from the notary. So, you know, I'm in the perfect location and there's several perfect locations in Armenia. And those are the places you want to look. Not necessarily what's considered to be gringo locations. Oh, by the way, are there gringos in Armenia? Very, very few. And no one seems to really know. Uh, I think I saw one in the last uh, 12 days. Not counting a couple friends that are moving to Armenia and we met up for lunch yesterday. Uh, but there's just not a lot and it's most of the gringos that come to this area go to the Salento part of uh, Quindío, which is a small town about probably 12-14 miles from Armenia. Deliveries. Now the good news about wherever you're going to live, as long as you're in the right stratus, uh, it's pretty easy to get deliveries, whether it's from a restaurant and their prices are normal and the delivery charge would be about a dollar, maybe a buck fifty, but you can also get deliveries from grocery stores. So if you're really not feeling good, you can just do your uh, shopping online and they'll bring it to you within a couple hours. And again, the delivery fees a buck or so. So you have that. Now, I don't recommend that as the steady way of doing it because there's a lot of things that you want that are not on that list. And particularly if you're getting meat or if you're getting fruits and vegetables, I'll tell you, you know, they see it as an opportunity to get rid of the crap. <laughs> you know, they're not, you know, the good stuff is in the store and you're getting the leftover stuff. So. 
you don't want to get your fresh fruits and vegetables that way, but um, you can get some basic things. And, you know, when I got ill for a little bit in Manizales, it, it, was, it was a blessing to have that just delivered to my door. But as I mentioned, Stratus matters. So if you're in Stratus 2, for example, getting a delivery, good luck with that. They don't want to go to those places. And there's certain things that, that just won't happen. So you need to be in probably four, five, and six to be ensured that you get good services. I will mention that um, while these Stratuses, it sounds like it gets more and more expensive, it kind of does. But if you look, you can get prices for rentals that are kind of similar across the Stratus. You can get really good deals in the top tiers because there's an overabundance of apartments in those tiers. Therefore, they're cheaper. Now, one thing in Cuenca that would drive me and everyone else crazy is it didn't matter how many apartments there were. It seemed like people just stuck with the price. It was going to be a high price and they just didn't want to come off it. And it's like, it's kind of crazy. Well, here, capitalism is alive and well. And if they're not renting, they'll drop that price. And you can negotiate almost anything here. And as long as it's something within reason, they'll go for it. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. Furnished or unfurnished? Now, your first thought is, I'm going to go and get furnished. And even though I know better, my first places that I were checking out, I was looking at furnished. But first of all, I will tell you that the used market here is thriving. There are countless shops that carry used furniture, used TVs, used everything. Something that, you know, unfortunately was really hard to come by in Cuenca. And in Cuenca, the ones that, you know, did exist were gringo owned and operated, but they were all consignment shops. And so the person would put an inflated price on it because he paid an inflated price. And then you got a fee on top of that. So you, very often you would go in there and you would find things as much or more than if you bought it new. Here is the exact opposite. I just bought a bed for about 20% the cost of when it was new. Bed with new mattress. The mattress was new. It's still, it's still packaged. Um, so they sold the bed. I got the mattress with it. And it was about 20%, a fifth of the cost if I bought that same thing new. Those are the kind of deals you can get. I just bought a refrigerator that, it's not a huge refrigerator. It comes up to about uh, my chin, but it's a good size refrigerator. Uh, Haseb brand, which is not the best, but it's okay. But I paid a hundred bucks for it. I, I, it's, and it's, it's silent, it operates great. Uh, it's frost free. I mean, it's everything you want in a refrigerator. I just didn't need a really big one. But it wasn't the only one. There was a bunch of them. You know, when I was looking, I need a refrigerator. And I'm looking, and it's all these prices that are like, wow, and they deliver. So I got delivered to my door for under $100, and the thing's working great. And it, when it's running, you don't even hear it. So. Yeah, you can get furnished, but you can get beds for a hundred bucks, 150 bucks with mattresses. You can get entire living room, couch, chair, coffee table uh, used for a hundred bucks. New, you can, you can get it for maybe uh, three times that. So even then it's not, it's not horribly expensive. Three, four, five hundred dollars will get you some pretty nice things. But because the used market here is so strong and a lot of things are really nice. Somebody, you know, went out and bought something on a whim and they treat things like, you know, they keep plastic on it. It's, 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 it's kind of like that. So they decide they have to sell it because they need the money or um, maybe they're just getting something. Who knows what, you know. But when you find it on the used market, in most cases, they're in really good shape. They have a, a almost a fetish here, and I, and I also saw it in Ecuador, 
They want to keep plastic, stuff that we would peel off a screen, for example, or on a TV where the plastic is around the frame. Here, they keep that stuff. They keep tags on everything. They keep the boxes. So when they sell it, it all goes in there. It has all these things and protected it. And they're doing it to protect their investment. It's smart. It's just most of us don't want to deal with that crap. We just want to get rid of it. But they don't do that. So you go to buy it, and it's surprisingly looking like new. So it makes a, a, a tremendous uh, bargain. I just saw a bargain for a Samsung H UHD 65-inch TV, and I looked up the model, had the model number, and that model uh, was from 2017, so it's a year old, and it was 700000 uh, pesos, that's $220 more or less, $230 for a 65 inch TV. And the thing was like brand new. It's actually a little big for my small apartment, but that's the kind of deal you could get. That would be a $1,000 uh, new. And you can pick up, you know, again, fifth of the price. Now, there is something in Colombia that you're going to have to figure out a way to get around it. I'm going to tell you, you know, my way. You need co-signers to get an apartment. It's, it's the norm. It's the culture. It's the procedure. It's what's expected. It's what's required. Now, in Armenia, uh, security deposits aren't a thing. So you just pay your first month rent and you need a co-signer. If you have somebody who's rented to Gringos before, they're more apt to work with you because they had a good experience. But the owner of this place hadn't done that. He'd never rented to a foreigner before. And um, he said, I don't know. I don't know what I can do. Now, could I have had a co-signer? I actually could. There's a family here that I've been friends with for a number of years. And I'm sure if I'd asked them, they would do it. I just couldn't bring myself. I don't know. I take it more serious than what they seem to take it here. So I wasn't about to ask. So I just offered to him that I would pay him a month's rent deposit. And, you know, I don't want to do that. And so he checked with some uh, people that he knew and uh, that had has property and has rented to foreigners, not just United States, but just foreigners in general. Because it's a concern, how long are you going to be here? It's easy for you to just pack up and go, you know, so obvious concerns. So he checked and he was told, well, the standard is three to six months security deposit. <laughs> so he came back to me and said that. I said, well, I'm not going to do that. Sorry, thanks, but no, I, I'm just not going to do that. I'm not going to tie that kind of money up. So he said, okay. And I, I said, I really appreciate your time. and you know, seeing the place and all that you've done, uh, nice person, uh, but can't do that. I'm not going to do that. About 15 minutes later, he got back to me and he said, would you do a month and a half? Now, the half a month amounts to about $140. Would you do a, would you do a month and a half? And I, yeah, it, it, it solves my problem. I actually probably could have hung out for more but it's a refundable deposit and here there it's a very different world than if I'm speaking to somebody in Ecuador where there it's good luck getting your refundable deposit back here it's not like that I mean taxis won't leave the curb until they insist on giving you your exact change back it's it's uh again it's a matter of culture where they would never consider stealing that from you. So I found it to be a good compromise and, and so I was comfortable with it. And then he, he threw in, he says, well, you don't even have to give me the second one for a month or two. I said, well, no, I'll, I'll just get it out of my hair. But he, he was, he wanted to rent the apartment. It had been empty for two months. I had I had actually looked up places that had been open for a while simply because it would put me in a better position. I mean, I have to be honest about it. You want to look for these things. If the thing just came open, they're not as hungry because they just have this idea they're going to rent it right away. But if it's sat for a couple months, 
and they're paying a mortgage on it, then um, they get nervous, and so they're more apt to make a deal. So that's how you want to handle that: is you know, offer up a security, but understand that it can be negotiable. Uh, and if you won't negotiate, then there's plenty of other places. You know, don't get hung up. Get hung up on a location, but don't get hung up on apartments. Not only are they advertised uh, on the internet, you'll find them on, there's advertising in Facebook for a lot of properties. The, uh, the website throughout South America, olx.com. Um, choose Columbia and whatever city, and you're going to find a ton of apartments there. Uh, you also find a, a lot of furniture there. I actually found the bed through that, which uh, my experience in Ecuador with OLX was not a great experience. I tried it a number of times and was disappointed. Here, um, I've, I've used it to uh, purchase two things, and they were good experiences. You know, with all the apartments available in the locations that you're probably going to want to live, uh, you know, don't don't sell yourself short and feel that you have to settle on something that you're just not comfortable doing. I completely understand without a co-signer that they need some kind of sense of security. I, I think that's completely reasonable and most of the world has a security deposit. I just didn't see any point in paying half a year's rent for a place that I'm leasing for a year. I mean, I just won't do that. And here's a little cautionary tale. Right now, the exchange rate is great. I'm getting through the bank here locally through the ATM about 3,080 pesos to the dollar. If I were to send it to myself through World Remit, it's about 3,150. If I go to a local ATM that has fees and they put uh, taxes and things like that, like Bank of Colombia sucks. Davi Vienda has no fees and no um, surcharge, but they nick you about 100 pesos. Uh, Bank Colombia has a service fee, plus they hit you up, so you end up getting about 2,800, 2,900 pesos to the dollar to the dollar, which is a significant difference. It really adds up. But here's the thing, that's now. The dollar is very strong. When you get an apartment, my apartment, uh, I said $300 in the video, it's actually $283 is the equivalent. That's really good. But when you choose your apartment, don't choose it on a great exchange rate now. Choose it on something more uh, worst case. I chose I chose 2500 um, you could choose whatever you're comfortable with be it 2000 which is that's you know I'd be surprised if we see that again for a long time but you know 2500 seemed like a reasonable lower end so choose it based on that and then with bank fees and things you might want to look at 2400. And so when you're looking at the cost of that apartment, choose it on worst case, because what you don't want to do is the higher the price of the apartment exponentially will be an issue with the exchange rate, right? So let's say you go out and you get the most uh, tier six, most extravagant place with, I don't know, hand massages before you go to sleep, or, you know, a really out there place upper crust, richy rich, and let's say you're gonna pay $500 a month. You go, oh my God, $500 a month, I'm gonna be living in paradise. But if that exchange rate goes haywire, that could turn into $800 a month, and maybe $800 a month is not that good for your budget. Maybe what you saw as affordable isn't. That's why you need to figure it on worst case. Worst case, what is my rent going to jump to it as far as dollars go? How is that gonna fit my budget? It's important because if your money is coming from the United States, that conversion comes into play. So you definitely want to look at that and you want to be careful. And so when I chose this place, you know, I'm looking at my high end of being 450 maybe. Well, where I am, I'll never have to worry about that. I, I won't have to worry about that at all. And so rather than be disappointed when the time comes and it is high, 
I just look at what's going on now as free money, you know, so I'm receiving a benefit now. Um, but take that into account. You don't want to just not think about that and then find yourself one day up against the wall struggling. So here's the bottom line. The short term that you spend choosing wisely for all these things that I mentioned in consideration of exchange and whether you're going to be furnished or not furnished, all of those things long term will pay you dividends. Don't just jump in and think it's not important because then long term you will pay the price for that. You'll go, oh my God, I wish I had done it differently, even though it doesn't seem important now or for the next two months. I mean, you're signing a lease, you're, you're doing a contract, you're going to be here, you know, for a year or more. So you really want to take these things into account. You don't want to be careless and find out that you can't sleep because it's noisy or the exchange rate went bad and it's costing you too much or you're trapped because you gave them so much money as a down payment. All of these things can come back to bite you. So use caution on that. Another thing about furniture, I just throw in there real quick. This goes long term. You get somebody else's furniture, something happens to it. It's kind of an open door for fees and charges and you know, the ugliness later. So having your own furniture really indemnifies you from those kind of problems. So make good choices now. Make a list of what's important. Take your time. Take a couple weeks to go around looking. For me, I, it took me about a week, and I know Armenia quite well. I mean, I know all of these areas firsthand. So you want to give yourself enough time. Make a good choice, and then you'll have a lot of months and years of happiness enjoying the dividends. I'll see you later.